Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be here today and to talk with you about the mindset in public education. You know, for ages, people have talked about the three R's in education, reading, writing, and arithmetic. But today, I'd like to take a little time and talk about responsibility, what I like to call the fourth R. And I think that's really about how we learn and also what human qualities we want to instill in our children as they grow. You know, I don't think an education system that is so firmly focused on job preparation is really um, such a great idea. Uh, we can so easily forget the notion of nurturing the humanity in our children. So um, come with me while I share a little bit of my journey, my mind shift from photography to the current education. Um, and also consider with me a mindset shift in education itself. So I have to say, if 10 years ago someone would have said to me that I'd be talking with you about this, I'd think that they were crazy. Um, when I think about the transformation that's taken place in my life from a social activist and photographer living in New York City to a founder and board chair of New Hampshire's first Montessori school, I uh, think of that talking head song, this is not my beautiful house, this is not my beautiful car, how did I get here? And so if I really had to say what here is, it's um, I guess I'm an education activist living in Manchester, New Hampshire. But the other thing it makes me think of is, you know, what is it that makes us choose a project or does that choose us? I was raised in, uh, in and around New York City, and it was in town where I cut my political and photographic teeth. I started as an activist, and I blocked traffic and chanted and hung banners from illegal places. And then later I applied my love of photography and my, um, really to my passion for politics and for community. Um, as a professional photographer, I uh, focused on issues around health, social welfare, education, and housing in New York City and around the world. Um, I was widely published and deeply energized by the issues that I covered, but I have to say at this point, my cameras are getting a bit dusty. I knew from the start that in my hometown, I think I just, whoop, it was my, <laughs> there we go, uh, it was love that brought me to Manchester, New Hampshire, where I live now with my husband and our seven-year-old child. Um, three years ago, I brought together a group of nine other women to explore the idea of founding a new public school. Um, and as my husband likes to say, if you give 10 women a laptop, they can create a school. If you give 10 guys the same machine, they will spend hours surfing the web looking for pictures of Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> so anyway, with equal parts, heart, soul, and sheer determination, we have created Mill Falls Charter School. And my work there continues um, with the committed leadership and also our fabulous staff to really nurture this new school that we have created. And it's a public Montessori school intended to serve all the children of New Hampshire not just those whose families can afford Montessori in a private setting. I knew from the start, now I really know it, that in my hometown it would be my challenge and my responsibility to hold on to um, my curiosity, my commitment to community, and stay open to where those roads would lead. Um, and really what better place to do that than in Robert Frost, New Hampshire, to take the road less traveled. Before I became a parent, I didn't really understand this idea of we follow our child, right? I'd heard that, didn't really get it. But now, eight years into a rather nutty career of motherhood, I, I think I'm getting the hang of it. So my guy started his education career at a private Montessori not far from here, and he flourished. He grew intellectually and socially. It was amazing for him, but somewhere along the way I started to think, what happens for all those other kiddos who don't get to have this experience? And so, you know, I'm the product of public schooling, and I believe firmly that it is the cultural and social piece of that that creates both a healthy childhood and also a healthy sense of citizenship. Further, I feel strongly that access to quality public health care, uh, health care, also health care, quality public education is one of the most key pieces that we offer here in America. This is why I set out to find a way to bring Montessori into a public setting here in New Hampshire. You know, Montessori fosters all four R's, if you will, um, and it's doing a really great job for people who can afford it. But, you know, there are about 6,000 Montessori schools around the country, but only about 600 of them are public. And so as we think together today about how mindset influences our process and our actions, join me as I talk about my motivations in helping to create Mill Falls. 
As engaged citizens, parents, neighbors, business owners, let's think about what really matters in education. Our public education system is clearly in need of our attention. Um, but as we think about rebuilding it, what are our goals? Are they the same goals that we had over 75 years ago when the current system was created, when we were a manufacturing and rural farming country? Or should our goals change? Should we look again at the length of the day, the length of the school year, the style and uh, look and feel of our classrooms, the content of our curriculum? Look again at that to better reflect who we've become and who the world, what the world has become. I believe that to get our kids' toes wiggling about education, we need to have a system that does a few things. One, I think it needs to individually challenge our students to reach their highest potential. It needs to support their social and academic growth alongside their academic work. And we have to admit that they don't all learn the same way or at the same time. And I strongly feel uh, that this can and must be done in a public school setting. You know, in Manchester, there are about 15,000 students, and in New Hampshire overall, about 188,000. So we would be crazy, foolish really, to think that they, or all of us, learn in the same way. As adults, we get the chance to choose what radio station we listen to, what news source we go to, what films we choose to see or miss, what restaurants we frequent. So why isn't there more choice in a public school education system? And as we consider these things, the options that we have for reaching and teaching our kids, we have to acknowledge the urgency of this challenge. Recently, there was a study done by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. It's a group based in Europe. And the, the study that they were doing was looking at literacy and other skills necessary in the modern economy, as it were, the global economy. And so they looked at people ages 16 to 65, 157,000 people living in 24 different countries. So how did we do? Well, the oldest Americans, some of us qualify, um, did fairly well. We were at or about the international average. But most profoundly, our youngest Americans were found to lag far behind their contemporaries in other countries. And so what does that tell us? Well, the oldest Americans will soon age out of the workforce. And even if we decide that they were better educated, the truth is that they were educated under a system that really hasn't changed in all these years, since the last century. Meanwhile, we know that other countries have been innovating, and I think the results are very clear. Our youngest Americans are missing the boat, and we must act now. But, um, you know, I think that we have to stop and think for a second and think, what are the important life lessons that we want our kids to take as we educate them? Ariana Huffington of Huffington Post fame wrote a book called The Fourth Instinct. The fourth instinct, she explained, is what sets us apart as human beings. It is uh, our natural inclination to be kind and caring. Um, and both Huffington and uh, Maria Montessori, quite some time before that, uh, talked about how this links us, it knits us into one human family. The fourth instinct would be our desire to find meaning in our lives. And it makes me think about this. As we educate our children, let's also remember to build their muscles of compassion. Soon after our school opened, one of our teachers became concerned about one of her students. She noticed that his sense of balance and speech were off. And sadly, it turns out that she was right. He was found to have a tumor. And so surgery and then a long rehabilitation process followed for this guy. And by the way, that teacher is my hero. To address the student's um, you know, quick absence and then extended um, uh, recovery, she would update him on how, uh, the classes on how he was doing. Um, but for them, really, time marched on. This year, though, this little guy has returned to school. No small victory for him. Um, but he's still not steady on his feet. And so his classmates um, take time spending recess with him because he can't really enjoy the freedoms of that. They take turns sitting with him at lunch and helping him with, with his work. It has been absolutely amazing to watch his classmates really wrap themselves around this guy. He continues to struggle with his illness and his recovery and the side effects from the treatment, but all the way along, his friends and our amazing staff are right there by his side. So here life has presented a, a kind of complex opportunity for us, and it has given his classmates the chance to learn about commitment, patience, humor in the face of challenge, and empathy. So at ages six, seven, and eight, they are working hard to build their muscles of compassion. We can't afford to miss opportunities um, in our kids' lives. We can't risk not reaching them at all. We can't wait until high school or college to teach them how to learn and ultimately to get them a sense of self, a sense of community, and make them excited about learning. As Tom Brennan, our former superintendent here, was fond of saying, it's a whole lot easier to change the tires on the bus while it's still in the garage than once it's set off down the road. 
So let's talk about getting kids excited about learning. Um, and let's start with the little ones. Um, intellectually, the six to nine-year-old is curious, imaginative, and very excited about sharing ideas. As Dr. Ma Maria Montessori put it, they are hungry for culture. So while I'm not a trained Montessorian, I'm going to share a little bit with you about what I've seen in our school, what I've witnessed. Um, uh, let's take a look. So to build our new public school, the first thing we started with was to build a diverse learning community. And we wanted it to look like every other uh, public school in southern New Hampshire. And so when we talk about diversity, we talk about economic, cultural, experiential, um, learning methods, all of that. So we visited housing projects, community centers. We met with ethnic and community leaders, uh, nonprofits that serve families in different ways. The goal here was to connect with a diverse community, people who might not otherwise hear about a new project like this. At our little school of 120 students, we have eight different languages that are spoken. So one day, one of our students from Bhutan was reading a book, and she came across the word pickle, and she didn't know what that meant. So she went to her teacher. Her teacher thought for a second, and she remembered that she has a colleague who loves pickles. So together, they went down to the kitchen. There was a jar of pickles in the fridge. They had some time with pickles. They cut them, diced them, tasted them, remembered how to spell pickle. And so this was hands-on learning, right? Um, it was met. And I don't mean to um, minimize the challenge that these literacy gaps present, but I also want to stress something else. In our Montessori school, we prioritize celebrating what each child brings. Her life experience has brought so much to her classmates' education. This little girl from Bhutan has shared with her classmates what it was like to leave her country, to leave her friends and her belongings behind. They've looked together to know exactly where she was born and where she traveled from to get here. This is all part of the cultural curriculum that is so much a part of the Montessori approach. A Montessori classroom looks more like a living room than it does a traditional classroom. Um, it is a carefully prepared environment, wholly designed for the child. There are no desks in rows. Children work at small tables or on the floor, wherever they're comfortable or undistracted. They get individual and small group lessons from their teachers, and those lessons are really geared toward the, le the levels where the children are. Um, they um, are in multi-age classrooms, and usually they're in those classrooms for three-year cycles. And so when they arrive as youngest, they're often modeling what they're seeing in their older classmates. As they age, they become those mentors. There are materials in these classrooms, physical objects that the children use to master concepts big and small in all areas of the curriculum, math, science, language. And these materials are beautiful. They're colorful. They're often wooden. Sometimes they're pickles, all to get the senses engaged. Uh, the students are empowered, and they're really taught how to make informed decisions, right? So they go around their classroom, and they choose materials to address their learning needs. The Montessori teacher moves around the classroom to where the children are and observes them working every day. There's a peace curriculum, a great emphasis on grace and courtesy, both in the classroom and beyond. And problems are most effectively and most often solved when the children work them through together. So for me, this pedagogy that is over 110 years old, used around the world from pre-K you know, pre up through high school in some places, really has so many of the things now being talked about in terms of education innovation. It also instills that fourth R, responsibility, in some really meaningful and interesting ways. Individualized education, something we hear a lot about. In a Montessori classroom, students don't all work at the same thing at the same, on the same thing at the same time. No one is pushed ahead or pulled back. And the Montessori education values the human spirit and the development of the whole child, physical, social, emotional, and cognitive. Divergent thinking. This is really the ability to collect a pool of ideas in response to a given question. There are some people that measure creative intelligence this way. Um, in a Montessori setting, teachers use the Socratic method of teaching. So from the start, our kids are taught to understand really the how, not just the what. They are daily practitioners of this notion of, mono of uh, divergent thinking. And as adults, those established neural pathways for creative problem solving can be tapped, and they can assess many possibilities and then choose the strongest. 21st century learners. By design, I would say Montessori students are fostered to be independent thinkers who work well together. The multi-age classroom um, is really great because I think the bigs help the littles every day. They ask questions of one another and guide each other. It's fantastic. This peer teaching and grace and courtesy curriculum is so effective in creating a sense of self, a sense of community, really strong problem-solving skills, and ultimately, what better way to know that we've mastered something than by teaching it? Executive function. 
An uninterrupted three-hour work cycle is used in Montessori, and the expectation that the children will be responsible for and complete their work creates some really interesting skill sets. Most importantly, I would say time management and also the ability to seek out information. So as we reinvent our education system, let's be sure to examine other systems out there in the world that have a proven and effective record of creating lifelong and engaged learners, students who feel and take responsibility for their education. As I said at the beginning, there's no one system, no holy grail that's going to be right for everybody. But my experience at our school is that Montessori is working really well for the vast majority of our kids. And you remember that pickle story? That little girl came to us um, being in America for less than two years, barely reading. She left her first grade year at reading level. And on a lighter note, um, you know how it snows a lot in New Hampshire, there are so many of our kids who experience snow days not as a victory, but really as a letdown. You know, I expect that our Mill Falls students will have test scores that are competitive with other schools. Um, but I'm thinking about our kindergartners now. It will be 20 years before they're out in the workforce, and we have no idea what that workforce will look like, where it will be. And um, I guess I ask this, are we really fulfilling our mission in education if we are just preparing them for their jobs? and not teaching them how to be responsible global citizens? Do we look at our seven-year-olds and just think about where they'll be employed? I, I hope not. I hope that we're nurturing their fourth instinct, that fourth R, to develop opportunities, frankly, that are more inviting and more creative than simply the notion of acing the test. As I close, I ask you to again consider the questions I posed earlier. Beyond the test results and the new skills for a changing job market and those original three R's, what are the human qualities we want to foster in our kids as they grow? How can we strengthen that fourth R for self and community? Remember, they will soon be the tenders of our community, and the future, ours, mine, yours, and theirs, will be in their hands. When I've asked myself these questions, I come to this. Whatever the system, it must foster curiosity, creativity, engagement, independence, and empathy. And build in our, our kids a sense of self, one that doesn't come from looking inward, but looking outward and looking forward, to give them the confidence and courage to travel their own roads wherever they may take them. You know, in my personal journey, I have fully unleashed my passion and compassion in my life and my life's work. The vision behind Mill Falls is that it will nurture our community's kids to do the same, to find that strength. I'm inspired by Dr. Montessori's thoughts, and I, I leave you with her words, but I also ask you to, con to consider this. What is your responsibility as we move forward to change public education? Dr. Montessori said, the unknown energy that can help humanity is that which lies hidden in the child. Thank you.